Texas A&M has raced into the 2017-18 season. No opponent has kept pace yet. Tonight on College Basketball on the SEC Network, the 6-0 Aggies play host to the UT Rio Grande Valley Vaqueros. Inside Reed Arena, I'm Will Johnson with Dr. John Thornton. And John, a lot of components have gone into the hot start for A&M. You cannot discount guard play. The individual play of these guys has been very monumental for the Aggies' start. Uh, but what they've done as a contingent or a group has just been very impressive as far as what they bring, sharing the basketball, doing things that the toughest part of handling the basketball, making other people better. They're all different experience-wise. Admon Gilders, the veteran. Dwayne Wilson's the grad transfer. T.J. Starks, the young freshman. And they all get it done in a variety of ways. They run the show, all point guards do, but there's multiple occasions they're making people better on the floor for the Aggies. Getting ready to tip this one off, UT Rio Grande Valley. This will be their ninth game of the year. They're three and five stepping into College Station. The Aggies 6-0 ranked ninth in the country. Can they continue to ascend? Getting the Vaqueros in from down in the southern tip of Texas. We're going to get Robert Williams to jump for the Aggies. And he will go against uh, Adonis Rabigui. Williams, a sophomore from Oil City, Louisiana. Could have been a lottery pick last year in the NBA draft. Chose to return to A&M. And the Aggies control with the opening possession. No surprise, thought that they try to control the paint by playing a zone and a packed in zone at that. Already a foul called, and that's on Nick Dixon. He cannot get into foul trouble tonight if UT RGV is to hang in. He's a preseason all whack player, 22.5 points per game. I know they're excited about here. Uh, they've traveled a lot, but being in a, in a situation where they can match up with a top 10 team right now is something that you, you look forward to playing for. Going down low to Robert Williams. He lost the basketball to the baseline. Turnover. A good play defensively. You want to keep it, make it tough on them. Guard 10 feet out. Uh, there's definitely a height advantage the Aggies have, but if you get a body on them, uh, get them uh, covered up in the paint as best you can, you're not going to see the alley oops as much as uh, you've seen early in the uh, preseason play. Jumper and a blocked shot by Robert Williams. He has blocked a shot in every collegiate game he's played in. DJ Hogue, three ball to break the ice. Pick your poison, you take away the paint, you, you cut down to the penetration that a &M's guards have been able to do a lot of, but you got to match up. There's no secret that guy can fill it up. Trying to match, rimmed in and out. That shot by Leslie Varner, Jr. Possession stays with the Vaqueros. Cannot leave DJ Hogue open. It's again picking your poison, but uh, that's one guy you do not want to uh, have an opportunity to hurt you from three. Loose on the inbound. Daniel Jr. ran it down, and Nick Dixon runs the point. Aggies start in the zone also, but it's a lot different looking zone with all the wingspan that the Aggies can run at you. Working it around the perimeter and under 10 on the shot clock. Nearly a steal. Dixon, no good, and Robert Williams the rebound. Texas A&M coming off that very impressive 75-59 victory over USC out on the West Coast Sunday. Back home, the Vaqueros still trying to get their first basket. I like the aggressiveness. Uh, they're taking it to them. A&M trying to find their range, and that is Tyler Davis with the tip back. That's something that Tyler Davis didn't do much of last year. That was run or getting in the paint. Uh, as agile as he's gotten, uh, made that look pretty easy. McDaniel Jr., that missed badly. You could see it right off of his hand. He's going to go long and right, out of bounds. McDaniel Jr., if you're wondering about that name, yes, he is the son of the former NBA All-Star. Yeah, one of the things that they will probably try to do is kind of make A&M adjust to different looks defensively and this little half-court trap back to the zone is something they're going to see throughout the course of this game. Dwayne Wilson wants a three. 
Aggies are crashing the boards. DJ Hope trying to put back, couldn't hit anything. Two and a half in, the first five belong to the Aggies. Robert Williams altering that shot. AM back on the offensive. Davis. Williams kept the rebound alive. The Vaqueros this way. Still cannot find their first basket. UT Rio Grande Valley has missed their first six shots. Gilder. Got bumped, no call, but he used the glass, and it's a 7 nothing Aggie advantage. That's a little bit of an advantage when you have the, the upper body strength that A&M's three guards have. I mean, contact doesn't bother them when they're trying to finish around the rim. The Vaqueros cold to start. They've lost their last two. Whistle. Going to get Adonis Rabigway for a foul on Tyler Davis. Billy Kennedy, head man of Texas A&M. Had a sweet 16 team two years ago. This team of that caliber, talent-wise, already receiving a lot of postseason talk, John, and we are not even through November. I don't remember knowing A&M to have this type of uh, recognition and of course I think a lot of it started with the win at West Virginia mm -hmm. and uh, being able to do that with a, against a quality opponent uh, kind of got a and on the national scene and radar of most other basketball teams and coaches. The whistle and that foul is on Javon Levi who's checked in. Vaquero's head coach is a familiar face here in College Station. Lou Hill from 1998 to 2003 was an assistant on Melvin Watkins' staff at Texas A&M. Brings a great basketball ped ped pedigree to the Valley in that he was with uh, Lon Kruger, UNLV, and at Oklahoma. Uh, did a great job with the, having an impact on recruiting and coaching in those two places and is going to do a great job in the, down the Valley. Aggies a 10-point advantage. Rio Grande Valley has no answer to start. Here's a turnover, though. And Levi will pull up from the free throw line. Another opportunity at it, falling to the floor. Front iron on that three-pointer by Mike Hoffman, who was really good on Tuesday against SMU. First 10 by the Aggies. Texas A&M, they've won all their games by double digits. 10 point lead early on this Thursday night. Welcome back to Reed Arena in College Station. Will Johnson courtside with Dr. John Thornton and A&M has run out to a 10 nothing lead on Rio Grande Valley. And John, we're gonna take a look at your keys to the game. One thing about the Aggies, we already discussed that they're receiving a lot of talk. The nation notices what they're doing. But we're six games into the season for Texas A&M, and development is still a big deal. No team is set when the calendar hasn't even flipped to December. No, there's no question about that, especially when you have the depth they have on their bench. They dealt with some suspensions early in the year, and they're getting that all figured out. What A&M has to do is just be them. To continue to develop as they're put people in different positions as the game gets into flow they got a number of ways to attack you but do what they do they need to keep developing that as far as Rio Grande Valley they need to control the paint they've done a pretty good job of that they've cut, but they need to keep their bodies on on people to keep them from off the offensive glass you haven't seen any dunks they have controlled the tent, but what they have not done is close down the shooters three-pointer DJ Hogue the Aggies have scored the first 13. Rio Grande Valley going five minutes without a bucket to start the game. Well, that's the deficit right now for the Vaqueros. I mean, they battled a little bit on the defensive end, not close down a three-point shooter, not getting back right now. Gilder got fouled. He's going to the line to try and complete a three-point play. He's already got seven. It's important that they establish something on the offensive end right now. This game's going to get out of hand in a hurry. So the shot selection hasn't been what I know Coach Hill's been hoping for. They've come early in the shot clock, and 
One of the things about it, as long as Texas A&M is, it's a little bit different shooting over 6'11s and 6'10s than what they've seen so far this year. Admon Gilder talked about him in the open. Leads the Aggies in assist. The junior out of Dallas, Madison High School, completes the three-point play. This is something that AM has done off and on all year. They'll pick you up man-to-man -man full court. That's what the guard play has allowed them to do. But at the same time, they'll mix it back up with the full court or three-quarter court zone press also. Tyler Davis ran into one of the Vaqueros. That's an offensive foul. It was drawn by Javon Levi. So there, if, if you go back and look at that, every Vaquero was in the lane right there trying to prevent something from happening. But that's what they have to do. But the next thing, part of that is, too, is keep your body on people. You can't allow the big guys to have a step or be able to have a free jump at it. 11 shots for the Vaqueros. None of them have fallen. Hoffman tries a three. He gets Rio Grande Valley on the scoreboard. Hoffman is coming off a Tuesday night against SMU in which he hit five threes and had 18 points. Beautiful looking shot. DJ Holt's got a pretty good one too, but that one's off the back iron. AM will retain possession. Alley oop attempt to Robert Williams. The Vaqueros are all over it. And a putback by Greg Bowie. That's what Coach Hill uh, would have hoped to have happened uh, at the five-minute mark a little bit earlier. Uh, five minutes gone in the game part is to break that ice. See they're playing with the little poise right now. Wayne Wilson thought about a three, but he's got the lane and he's fouled. He'll shoot two. That's one of the strengths that we've talked about. It's one thing to have guard guards that uh, run the show, get people in the right place, but to have the kind of strength that these guys have and the toughness to go and tack bigs or anybody and finish at the rim has been really impressive to watch this year. Two of A&M's wins came at the Barclays Center in Brooklyn, the home of the Nets. The Aggies were the champions of the Legends Classic when they defeated Oklahoma State and Penn State up there. Dwayne Wilson kind of burst onto the scene in the Big Apple. He was named All-Tournament. You know, he's, he's one of those guys that when we talked to the coaches, he's been quietly going about things. He just got a rip, John. Two on one if he wants it. Back to Robert Williams, a whistle blew before the bounce pass. No, you can tell he's a fifth year senior. I mean, he's got he's got that poise, that confidence. Uh, that little uh, drop off to Robert Williams is gonna bring everybody to their feet. Those kind of plays uh, and what a, a good guard play can do can, can make, like we've talked about, other people better, but can erupt an arena because of just the niftiness, you know, see the floor, get the people in the right places uh, to be able to create some exciting plays. Robert Williams did it all last year. Yeah, he kind He'll of bring did. some people to the gym. Well, I think about Robert, <laughs> Robert Williams, Williams, if you think about him, if people have had a chance to see him, he's just a sophomore. And special, special talent. And you can see where the Aggies are more comfortable about utilizing his skills. He's a, absolutely a bailout. If you get in the lane and you, you don't have anything going forward to the rim, there's a pretty good chance there's a condor coming in to pick it up and jam it home. <laughs> J.J. Caldwell will come in for Dwayne Wilson. Off the glass, a foul called. They got Robert Williams. That's, you know, as, as far as not being intimidated by the height, did a great job of keeping his off arm on the body of Robert Williams. Keep getting too close to him. And also, when Robert jumps up, he actually pushes him in, in, in uh, body to body. Always going to be called a foul. Well, Xavier McDaniel Jr. at the line for two, the son of the former NBA All-Star. First 16 points tonight were scored by the ninth-ranked Aggies. The Vaqueros have settled in since, but they will play from well behind. Trying to pick up the, uh, the change defenses right now, see if you can throw in them off with the little half-court trap back to the zone. We were at Rio Grande Valley's shoot around earlier today. They were working on this trap quite often. You see how tight they are playing in the lane. Again, they're going to they're gonna let that happen. It's a pick your poison. They're not going to run out and let him dump it down low. 
which Tony is very good at being able to pass interiorly for a big man. Trocha Morelos, the Colombian, finds the range, and Rio Grande Valley answering right back. Bowie with a three. Some good minutes here by the Vaqueros since that ugly start. That's a close thing. I mean, what has to happen to stay close is, you know, breaking the ice offensively, but not get away from what you're supposed to be doing on the defensive end. Collapse again. Got the offside help. It's going to be one of those situations that they're going to have to get there all the time, not get lazy. A&M being led and scoring by Gilder, who has eight. Hey, how about that? Is that a quiet eight or what? Yeah, that's quiet. Well, you know? You're right. I mean, three's help, but that is. I mean, that's just he's a journeyman type guy. And uh, not that he's that's demeaning in any form or fashion. He just works hard, gets things done. Yeah, Gilder is sort of unsung, John. And I think there were a lot of people in College Station and, and within this program that noticed when he was left off the all sec team preseason now, they thought that may have been a snub but he's a great player but that shows you somewhat how he does fly under the radar he really does i mean uh, but you know what he'll surprise you too i mean we're talking about being indiscreet but he'll he'll get in the lane and, and dunk on you he'll make other people better he shoots the three he has that a real quick release he just makes it look easy Bowie wanted another three. Here goes Caldwell to the basket. Block shot, but a foul. That'll go on Mike Hoffman. So the Aggies, 23 to 10 over UT Rio Grande Valley. A Thursday night in College Station, the Association of Former Students building with the giant Aggie ring behind it. Graduation's coming up here on the A&M campus. Only one time has the Vaqueros beaten Texas A&M. They've only played five times. And if, if folks in the state of Texas aren't quite familiar with UT Rio Grande Valley, well, what that is is a couple of years ago, the University of Texas Pan American, that's what it's been called for so long. It merged with UT Brownsville. And with those schools combining, they went under a new moniker and nickname. You now call it UT Rio Grande Valley, and they are no longer the Bronx. That's what UT Pan Am was. Uh, they're the Vaqueros. Now. Yes, uh, when they played the Aggies earlier, uh, it was Lon Kruger who was a coach down there who's now right. in Oklahoma. But uh, A&M's had a, a, a healthy series of games baseball-wise with Pan American. Yeah. A very solid baseball program. Very up-and-coming school down there in the University of Texas system. Longtime UT Pan Am head baseball coach was Al Ogletree. Led them to great success. He is an Aggie. That giant ring you saw out behind the Association of Former Students building, he wears one of those. He's an Aggie, <laughs> Al Ogletree. And, for almost three decades was the head man of the UT Pan Am baseball program. But with the merger, UT Rio Grande Valley, and they have the basketball trailing the Aggies by 15. Dixon, their leading scorer, he wanted to go to the basket, but a kick out pass. Miss on a three pointer by Mo McDonald. Here come the Aggies, they're running the floor. Tony Trocha Morelos wanted it in the paint, got tipped away, it'll stick with A&M. Great coaching point right there. You can't ever let your guard down. A&M in the past hasn't really been noted for being consistently looking to score in transition. That's changed this year. They will ab absolutely beat you down the floor. Everybody can run. This is J.J. Chandler with the basketball. He wants an elbow jumper, and that rolled out. Very important to get a good shot. Not so sure that's exactly what you want on the road. And quick into the shot clock. Rio Grande Valley, three of 19 from the floor. Starks, three ball. A&M has tried a number of threes. They've shot them pretty well. They're four of nine from behind the arc. Savion Flag is in the game, John. That's significant. Hadn't seen him since the opener in Germany against West Virginia. Now he's the guy that started in that game, and uh, as a as a freshman uh, going into that environment, uh, I think he hit the first bucket to get the thing to break the ice in the game. But if you see, he's wearing the protective uh, face gear. He had a, a problem with the 
orbital bone break and uh, seems to have uh, done everything right to recover and get back in it. Now wearing that as a protective measure. So for the first time in five games, Savion Flag returns to the court. Foul on J.J. Caldwell. Going back to West Virginia, the Aggies open their year at Ramstein Air Base in the Armed Forces Classic, November 10th against the Mountaineers. At one point, you find them down 13 in the first half, John. But we were talking about this earlier when we attended both shoot-arounds at Reed Arena. The Aggie response was incredible. And here goes Flag to the basket for a couple. A&M by 17. But the way they bounced back against West Virginia, maybe you knew it early in the year that this team had some chemistry, something special to work with. Well, West Virginia's reputation precedes them. They're in your drill, tough, hard-nosed defensive team strong guards that, are, that are after you from the get and uh, did that to the Aggies early on but they weathered the storm played people and then got back in the game and, and then some but it was a big as a, one of the big uh, keys to what AM will do this year is their bench so you bring in a guy like flag off the bench 6 eight jump take it the length of the floor by himself that's another reason that AM has an advantage this year and the fact they can go so many different ways off that bench they can go small they can get bigger and they can use different combinations. Nick Dixon finds his way into the score column with that free throw. Billy Kennedy has depth. Dixon from Hillsdale, Illinois. 22.5 points per contest. Had to go nearly 10 minutes into this one for his first point and now gets his second as he sinks both free throws. Remember, it was a 16-0 A&M lead to start the game. We've played pretty even since then. Yeah, the zone, I think, uh, basically is working the way it was designed. You saw them talk about a workout in their, uh, their pregame workout at, at noon. Contact, no foul call, but Savion Flag. He's making his presence felt in his return from injury. Making up for lost time. <laughs> He's got the want to, wants to be out there. Finally gets some minutes, and he's got four points. One of the things you'll see that and he just picked up his second foul did flag, John. That's a, that's a little bit of a, a hustle. You'll take that, but uh, at this point in time, emotion, excitement, getting in there and getting things going, man, I got to be under better control than that. But what you're going to see is a matchup problem in that AM does have the link, does have the bigs. If they spread the, if, if Rio Grande Valley spreads the floor, what happens is you put all kinds of pressure on man coverage on the perimeter. And if that breaks down, the help's got to come from the right place. And uh, they're doing a good job of spreading it. Nixon got to the basket. He's got a quick four after going nearly 10 minutes without scoring. Preseason all whack player. Second team all whack a season ago. Steele almost, not quite. Getting in the passing lanes was Jordan Jackson. Hit a little bit of a, a, a slump the Aggies have in the fact that the passes aren't as crisp, not attacking the basket like they were earlier. And no matter whether it's zone or not, the, the first 10 minutes they were creating all kinds of pressure. Uh, they, are, they have arms, they're out in the passing lane, and they're moving. Uh, they've caught their second breath as far as the Vaqueros and, and their defense effort right now. Kick ball, then the shot clock will revert back to 20. J.J. Chandler will come an inbound. Yeah, you, you T. Rio Grand, what you don't want to do is you don't want a and to get into one of those little streaks that they've done this year where they put back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back points together. And right before half, the important that they kind of keep the lid on it if they can. Caldwell tried to put back over a Trosha Morelos miss. Wouldn't fall for him. Jumper. That's off the back iron. Foul call to the rebound attempt. Leslie Varner Jr. missed. Rio Grande Valley continues to struggle from the floor. They've fallen under 20% as a team. Shooting, they're just four out of 22. The good news, they got a lot of shots. The bad news, they're not falling. The only way to make them is keep taking them. One of the things that uh, all good teams have to do, and it's one of those, it, it, it's not like exactly a news flash, but you, the good teams have to be good from the free throw line. And AM has gotten off of that start shooting about 78% from the floor, I believe. Uh, but it's something that, as the season goes, obviously in playoff situations, conference championships, 
great free throw shooting teams and teams in the ring. And the Aggies are seven of eight from the line tonight. Tony Trocha Morelos a moment ago with their first miss. That was off the glass. Bowie's got seven to pace the Vaqueros. Hanging around since the sloppy start. Been in a big hole since. But they're not letting it get out of control. It could have gone that way easily after you're down 16 to nothing about eight minutes into the contest. TJ starts, drive, nice off the glass. That's the breakdown. We talked about packing the lane and making it tight and don't let them score cheap in there. Have done a good job in spurts. That, did, that was not a good example of that. A&M will bring a fresh five onto the floor at the next dead ball, and it will be the starting five. Traveling call. And the Aggies will get their starting five back on the floor when we come back. The Vaqueros have settled in, but they play still from well behind. A&M's largest lead is 17, and that was about three minutes ago. 15 points the advantage now, and UT Rio Grande Valley, John, shooting 21%. Hey, hanging around, shooting that poorly. They're doing some things right. They'll see what happens right here. You, you look at Tyler Davis is in one for two, and Robert Williams doesn't have a shot. Give credit to the Vaqueros by keeping the ball out of their hands, but there needs to be more of a concerted effort to get at these guys. I think they just made one. Robert Williams was setting a pick down there to get Tyler Davis free on the paint. Got the basketball, sent it back out. A three pointer by Dwayne Wilson is no good. They're packing that zone in there, and they're going to make the beach from afar. UT Rio Grande Valley playing in their ninth game already this season. They haven't had a lot of rest. Jumper is good by Dan Kimasa. He's from Kigali City, Rwanda. A story on him and one of his teammates later in our broadcast. 31-18 Aggies, the ninth ranked team in the country, looks to remain undefeated this evening. Admon Gilder off the back iron and over the gold stand. You have three guys, uh, perimeter shooters, that have shot it very, very well from three for the Aggies. And you got uh, Hogue, Admon, and Wilson. But you do a little bit too much standing on the perimeter. Um, it's easy to find a guy who's always in front of you. I, I'd like to see more movement and try to overload a little bit. Aggies get a steal. Two on two. If Wilson continues, he'll go to the basket. Strong to the hoop. And that's impressive. I mean, it makes it look easy, but that's a contact and finish. Dick Dixon, he was kind of open on the right side, elected not to take the shot. He's the leading scorer. I feel like you got to pull up jumper there when you get an open look. Instead of miss and an Aggie possession. Davis has it. Nice feed to DJ Hogue. But you see that when the interior passing in a zone like that that's collapsed that much, that's an SP pick point. Very good hands by uh, both players that can complete that. AM can take their new largest lead with points of any kind on this possession. Nice catch by Tyler Davis. Pass was nearly zipped out of bounds. Now he's trying to get to the basket and. Uh, that is a foul on the floor. There you see the, the fact that the short corner where you have DJ Hogue on the baseline, interior passing by uh, for inside people, it's, it's a big plus. Uh, a couple of years ago or a year ago, that wouldn't have happened. That's a great hands by, great recognition by Todd, great hands by Hogue. Now Davis is at the free throw line. Missed that. It barely skimmed the front iron. The foul was on Dan Kamasa. Ten team fouls this half by Rio Grande Valley. So A&M is shooting two the rest of the way until halftime. It's that old free throw jinx after you compliment a team. Yeah. They go, they go uh, and uh, miss the next two. See if Tyler Davis can get them back. Rolling again. They've missed three in a row after making their first seven. A&M has committed 16 fouls this half, so 
Rio Grande Valley in the bonus with the next one. Jumper, got it. Kamas has got a nice stroke. Four points since entering. Nearly a turnover. And there's the alley-oop. The crowd's been waiting for it. The sophomore from Oil City. One of those oil booms now that he likes to throw down. Need to have a body on it. No surprise. Blocked shot by Dwayne Wilson. Looks like that's who got the hand on it almost from behind. Back to the basket, and there's the usual with the block shot, Robert Williams. A block shot on this end. An alley-oop dunk on the other end before that. There you go, post to post. They do that all the time in practice. Very good at uh, seeing where each other are, seeing, give them a little hint that he would throw it up high. They're going to do that. They practice it all the time. I love the hustle that Robert Williams, after the block shot, uh, basically laying out, trying to get the retrieve it. That's a uh, one-stop shot in there, blocked the shot, and recovered yourself. Well, he had a hard time stopping himself. He went so hard after it, he nearly ended up in the tunnel. With the shot clock expiring, an errant three ball, but now a fresh 30 on it. Offensive board after a couple of tips and a bounce. Mo McDonald being guarded by Wilson. Trying to drive, he's cut off, good defense. Yeah, got a hand on that. Leslie Varner Jr. tried to get it over Robert Williams. Couldn't. Three-point shot. That was by Bowie. A whistle. And that is on the Vaqueros. Vaqueros foul number 20, Johnny Kronagarek. That is his third. Foul situation is going to be a problem. That's Johnny Kronagarek from Sydney, Australia. He's checked into the game. He got the foul. Tyler has a chance to go redeem himself at the free throw line. Has shot it well this year. It's interesting that the last time out, uh, UT Rio Grande Valley clawing their way back in it again, but it's been a concerted effort to get the, the post players involved. You know, we hadn't had a dunk. Uh, we have an alley-oop from a post player to a post player, but uh, it's, it's just obviously a point of, uh, of focus that that's what they're going to finish up and uh, it creates you know scoring opportunities but also foul situation Tyler Davis has missed three in a row from the stripe trying to find the cylinder and cords still can't do it A&M was seven of their first seven from the free throw line they've missed their last five four of those by Davis Still a 17-point lead, matching the Aggies' largest. McDaniel Jr., the three-point shot. E.J. Hogue with the block out and the rebound. Admon Gilder. Davis wants to go to the basket, nearly lost the ball, but the sky hook drops. 19 points, that's the new largest advantage for AM. Foul call, this will go on Tyler Davis. So Robert Williams, he can bring down the house, excite the crowd. He did it all through his freshman season. You'll see it as a sophomore too. Aggies by 19. Breeder in on this Thursday night. UT Rio Grande Valley, they have the only two student athletes in the NCAA that hail from the country of Rwanda. They're both from Kigali City and they both play forward for this Vaqueros team. Dan Kamasa and Adonis Rabigwe. They grew up as best friends playing soccer together in Rwanda. They moved to the United States to pursue better education and while attending different high schools in Tampa, they both learned to play basketball. Rabigwi played as a freshman at Furman before transferring to UT Rio Grande Valley to join Kamasa there. That's a distinction, John. The only two student athletes in the NCAA that hail from the country of the world. Well, it didn't take them long to acclimate from soccer to basketball. They both, <laughs> they both show a proficiency that you would have thought they'd been stateside their entire lives. 
And I like that. Rabigui, you know, he got away from he got away from his guy Kamasa for a little while. He was up there at Furman. He said, no, I got to get back. He headed down to the valley in Texas to get back with it. It's probably the climate. The climate might be a little more similar to what they're used to. Probably. Yeah, yeah. The Aggies have the 17-point advantage. A&M, their six wins, four of them have come over power conference opponents. Uh, oh, trying to get that down low to Isaiah J.C., the freshman who's in the game from Colleen. And then J.C. got in the passing lanes, dipped that out of bounds in the paint. This is the opposite of uh, interior passing that it's been, they've been so good at. Uh, wide open for, for a period of time down there. Late, late recognizing it, too hot to handle, maybe not ready to catch it, but uh, an easy opportunity passed up. The Aggies get that early 16-point advantage, and this is the game is just stuck right there. It's the, way, it's the way Rio Grande Valley wants it to go. They don't mind a little stagnant action. You're on a the stalemate. UT Rio Grande Valley told you playing their ninth game of the year, they have not had more than three nights off yet this season. Offensive foul. Back in the paint. Smart play. A&M's going to get J.J. Chandler, J.J. Caldwell, and T.J. Starks into the game. A&M's going predominantly man-to-man. -man. Talked about the matchup. Big against the Littles. Uh, both teams has their, their, their own set of size, but at the same time, quickness and speed with smaller guys. Big guys guard and smaller guys when you spread the floor like they're doing right now puts a real challenge in the man to man defense. Lou Stallworth out of New Hall, California, has checked into the game for the Vaqueros. Bowie, floater, got that to drop off the iron a few times. The eight games already this season, the lack of rest. Lou Hill at their shoot around earlier today. He said he feels like his team, the Vaqueros, all right, it's like an NBA squad on a West Coast swing. We're just playing on the road all the time and not getting to sleep in our own bed a whole lot. Tony Trocha Morales, he got fouled hard. Good look by T.J. Starks as he looked down on the baseline in that short corner area, which is kind of an in-between seam in the backs of zones. And uh, seemed that would be a little bit of a vulnerability for the way that they're trying to collapse it, but uh, did a good job of getting it to Tony. Morelos down on the on the baseline. The free throw struggle continues after the Aggies were scorching to start from the strike. Made their first seven, missed their last six. And that one rattles home. Levi working on Caldwell on the right wing. Good hand ripped by J.J. Caldwell. It stays, though, with the Vaqueros. Shot clock running down, just two. Got that off. Stallworth, a three-pointer. The Carols are just three of 17 from behind the arc, but a big one by Lou Stallworth. Physical in the paint. Rio Grande Valley with the basketball, nearly lost it. And a steal this time by J.J. Caldwell. T.J. Starks, three-pointer. Front iron, no good. Not out of the question that Rio Grande Valley could get within 10 or less before halftime. That would please Lou Hill. Might make his halftime speech sound just a bit different than it would have 15 minutes ago. That's a foul and going to the line to shoot a couple is Javon Levi. No, you got to give him credit. Got off to and still not shooting well, but haven't panicked. 
kept doing the things they need to do in the areas that give them a chance and uh, have knocked down an occasional shot when they needed to have it. Uh, making free throws or not making free throws has been a big deal for the Aggies at this point. And uh, those missed opportunities are kind of haunting as the half closes out. DJ Hogue, one of the Aggies that looks on from the bench. A&M can take the last shot of the half if they want it. Shot clock is off. I like what I've seen in J.J. Caldwell. Sees the floor, unbelievable. Effortless passer. Got great strength in his wrists. Gets the ball there quick. Has a presence with the basketball that makes it really, really special. The Aggies will hold. Starks, pretty good move to the basket, but no conversion. A heave at the end of the half. That's off the glass and no good from Bowie. But UT Rio Grande Valley within 12 at the break. Looked like that wouldn't be the case when Texas A&M scored the first 16 points of this contest. The ninth ranked team in the country leads by a dozen. It's halftime here at Reed Arena where Texas A&M is taking on UT Rio Grande Valley. Welcome into 12th Man Studios, I'm Hope Barnett. Now if you've ever been on campus here at Texas A&M, you've probably noticed the students in uniform. These students are called the Corps of Cadets. They train rigorously day in and day out. Now when I think of rigorous training, I think two things, the athletes and the Corps. The Texas A&M swimming and diving team got a taste of what it's like to be in their shoes. We started our night at the core center where they have, it's a little like core museum and so we learned a lot about um, kind of like the core, like just basically how it's set up and all. They've got some donated Aggie rings, those are really cool to see. We got a whole thing on Reveille which we of course loved. Um, they had a board on um, core athletes, athletes in the core. Um, and they have like a triathlon team, a marathon team, like a soccer club team, like it's really cool. It's cool to see like how they're involved in athletics as well. So what we did today was to come in uh, to the quad with all the Corps of Cadets and we were here to lower the flag. So we got into formation, lower the flag, and then marched all the way to the dining hall and actually had dinner with all the Corps of Cadets. I thought it was super cool how we got to meet a lot of new people and kind of feel what it's like um, to be in their shoes for a night. This teach you, teach you values and how to appreciate things and I'm, that's why I'm really glad that we did it. It's a great experience, I'm really happy and I, I hope uh, the whole team got something out of, out of this and I mean this is awesome, it's great. Although in two very different roles, they realize that hard work and discipline are two keys to their success. Stay with us. The Aggie men's basketball team traveled halfway across the world to not only bring back a huge win against West Virginia, but to also say that they had the honor to play in front of the people who fight for our country every day. We take a look back at their exciting trip. Tina Wynn has the story. The Texas A&M men's basketball team tipped off their 2017-2018 season overseas, taking on 11th ranked West Virginia in the Armed Forces Classic.
On Wednesday, the team arrived in Germany at the Ramstein Air Base, the largest concentration of American military personnel outside of the U.S. In the midst of Veterans Day, the Aggies were able to celebrate and honor those serving in a special way. They took time to bowl with American military personnel and their families, participated in a kids clinic for the children of American military members, and visited the USO Warrior Center to greet those who are recovering from injuries. Despite being outscored early in the first half, the Aggies came roaring back. Led by strong performances from Tyler Davis, DJ Hogue, and TJ Starks, the Aggies struck down the 11th ranked Mountaineers with a score of 88 to 65. A special victory as many people serving our country rushed the court to join in on the celebration. After posting 23 points, 9 rebounds, and 7 assists, junior Admon Gilder earned SEC Player of the Week. A big week for the Aggies as they get ready to take on the rest of the 2017-2018 season. Good win, baby. Enjoy how we are, bro. Although a win is always amazing and well appreciated, it's almost impossible to beat that post-game celebration down on the court with the men and women serving our country. Don't go anywhere, we'll get you back to Reed Arena for the second half. Well, the 12th man is pleased. They lead by a dozen at halftime for Breed Arena in College Station tonight. Will Johnson with Dr. John Thornton. Texas A&M started this game with a 16-0 advantage. Scored the first 16 of the contest. The Vaqueros have really settled in since then. UT Rio Grande Valley, though, shooting the ball pretty cold, John. They, they struggled from behind the arc as we take a look at the halftime stats. But they have been scrappy to kind of stay within 12 at halftime. You kind of talked about how they've kind of packed it in in the paint. They've got to control this game 10 feet in. Well, Texas A&M does have a sizable advantage with those points in the paint. Well, they did, and it came in that one spurt about, uh, uh, I guess, about halfway through the half. But you'll see they picked their poison in the fact that A&M's four for 12, which is off of what they've been shooting for the year. So, you know, it's a time bomb. It can all it can blow up on you, but they were deciding that let's make the, the big stay away from the paint, the big power play around the basket, and they've done a pretty good job of that. Admon Gilder, DJ Hope, they both got eight points. Well, they do. When you pack it, you have a chance to to get those those uh, open guys on offsides, but also uh, Admon's such a quiet player as far as making other people better and also scoring on his own as he attacks the rim. So the two. Metroplex natives, Admon Gilder, DJ Holt, the stat line looks pretty similar. Both are three of five from the floor. Both have put up three three-pointers. Hoax played in 13 minutes, Gilder 11. For the Vaqueros, leading scorer is Bowie. He's got nine, he's four of eight from the floor, and he's hit a three-pointer. So final 20 minutes coming up, Texas A&M ranked ninth in the country, 6-0 on the year. They've won them all by double digits. In fact, the Aggies' closest game this season was an 11-point victory over Penn State in Brooklyn. That gave them the championship of the Legends Classic at the Barclays Center, but nobody has gotten closer than that against these Aggies, and it's a 12-point advantage. But Lou Hill and his Vaqueros Looking to stay tough. He mentioned he knows that his team is probably a little road weary. They, they've been away from home quite a bit. They haven't had more than three nights rest since the season started. But he did ask for some fight. He said, first and foremost, I want to see fight from my group because he didn't think he got a lot of that in the two games prior to this when it gets Grambling and SMU. But the fight, John, that's been there since that. 16-0 deficit to begin the game. I think fighting adrenaline. I think that might have been a little bit of the problem shooting the basketball early. They were all so hyped to be in this situation and playing who they're playing. There was a lot of extra, you know, a little extra effort, and it was, uh, you know, not very well shooting-wise. But defensively, they've been good. Rebounding, they've been good. They haven't been intimidated after that, that dry spell. Uh, they'll take it right at you, and they've kind of stuck with their game plan, and uh, it's played so – you kept them in the ball game up to this point. Well, Dixon st scores to start the second half, and the Vaqueros are within 10 for the first time since it was 10 to nothing. DJ Hogue to Wilson, passing around the perimeter. 
Now a zipped pass through the key. Robert Williams got fouled, and the guilty party is Xavier McDaniel Jr. It's going to be a party around the basket if the ball enters into the post because, like we say, and we kind of killed it, but at the same time, they're going to make it tough on your attack in the basket, even if they do have a definite size advantage, the Aggies do. And uh, another uh, opportunity for an interior pass that it's just so collapsed in there, there's not a whole lot you can do, but at the same time, you need to make free throws. Free throw line has become an adventure for A&M. Made their first seven shots from the stripe tonight. Since then, they are one of their last eight. Make it one of their last nine, and that one missed badly. Robert Williams empty on two shots from that stripe. UT Rio Grand Valley could get within eight or even closer with this possession. We get a jumper that is off the iron and no good from Leslie Varner Jr. DJ Hogue got the rebound. Now Hogue was thinking about a three-point shot instead of steal. Our Carols. They want an alley oop and they are playing with some energy. UT Rio Grand Valley the alley oop to Xavier McDaniel Jr. Paces quickening. Foul called on the Aggie end. That's something that. Uh, if you're matching energy for energy to start the second half, uh, UT Rio Grande Valley is act actually leading. Uh, done a great job of, of picking up where they uh, bounced back in the first half and a little extra ump to get things going. No intimidation factor going on right now. And uh, you got to see what's going to happen as far as A&M starting with their original five stars. Played a lot of people in the first half uh, trying to get back into some kind of rhythm with the original starters back out there, but obviously having struggles from the free throw line. Starting to become unexplainable. Now Admon Gilder misses from the strike. Foul to send him there was by Mo McDonald. So a reprieve and a make and a nine point Aggie advantage. Dixon, he's got six, averages 22 per game, and he just got a blocked shot by DJ Hogue. The Aggies quickly up the floor. Dwayne Wilson, Robert Williams, and they are surrounding him. Had three Vaqueros down there when Williams possessed the ball. Foul called now on Xavier McDaniel Jr., so he's starting to get into trouble. It's his third. UT Rio Grande Valley, if you look at some of the games they've played against power competition, not a lot of them actually. Lost badly in their last action against SMU, but on November 22nd, they did go to Atlanta to play Georgia Tech and came within 10, losing that one 78-68. Within nine, the ninth ranked team in the country, but now it's a double digit Aggie lead again as Tyler Davis got an easy buck. Looks like they picked the interior of the zone and an out of bounds play that you don't anticipate getting burned on a one footer if you're doing your job uh, on the defensive inbound. Baseline jumper missed everything. That was from Adonis Rubigwe. Wilson, three pointer. AM trying to stretch the lead again. Can't do it. Bo McDonald bringing it up the floor for the Vaqueros. Dixon, three ball. That missed everything. In an overall cold night shooting, UT Rio Grande Valley is hanging with the Aggies, but now AM wants some distance between them and RGV and a dunk by Tyler Davis. Good run on the floor. Tyler Davis has really worked on his body in the offseason, and he's gotten better. Got better every year as far as uh, firming himself up and being able to. Uh, Adjust his game, getting up down the floor, and runs with the best of them nowadays. Points in the paint still heavily favoring Texas A&M. 24 to 8, the Aggie advantage down low. DJ Hogue just picked up a foul on a bump. Oh, McDonald up top being guarded by Dwayne Wilson. Hoffman is coming off that big night Tuesday against SMU. He's back in the game. The Vaqueros. Three on the shot clock. They got to shoot, John. And that's off the front iron. No good. Rebound. That's going to stay with Rio Grande Valley. Now what I was going to mention is the fact that uh, 
they've elected to go small, and we talked about at the beginning of the game, uh, A&M has a decided height advantage, but when you do spread the floor in your half-court offense and you have big on little guarding and the quickness factor, not that they're not quick, but there's an, there's an advantage there, and you'll see it's an open post for the most part, and they're going to spread the floor. Uh, you're going to see A&M pull it, go into a zone now. The big way to Hoffman. Three-pointer no good. And Montgilder picks up the rebound. He lost it back to Hoffman. Rabigway almost got fouled. No whistle. D.J. Hogue keeps possession down there on the baseline with a one-handed board. The Aggies look to take it back out to 15 or more. A&M's largest lead tonight is 19. Gilder got it. And it's an 18, or excuse me, 16 point advantage. And Dixon can't get that to fall. He averages 22 a game. He's only got six tonight. DJ Hogue trying to find that stroke. Dixon the rebound. UT Rio Grande Valley got within nine, but it's a run by the Aggies, and they're up 16 again. Rabigway shot altered by Tyler Davis. Dwayne Wilson tried to feed Davis. Foul on Rabigway. So we'll take it to a break. AM is running again. The Carrolls were within single digits. But the Aggies up 16 once more. Admon Gilder having a nice night. A Thursday night in College Station. It's an 8-0 Aggie run, and UT Rio Grande Valley has missed their last eight shots. Lou Hill, second year on the Edinburgh campus in charge of the Vaquero program. You see, from 1998 to 2004, he was on Melvin Watkins' staff here at Texas A&M. And then when you go to UNLV in Oklahoma, John, that's where he teamed up with Lon Kruger. Right, has a, has a pass to Pan American. Love the opportunity that Lou Hill's gotten. A prime time guy as far as having a situation where he's gonna be a very good coach, gonna build a program down there. Uh, you can see by the way his kids listen as we watch practice, how they've uh, battled in pressure situations that there's a lot of buy-in. It's gonna be exciting to see how he builds that program down there. Take you back to the 2016 NCAA tournament. Texas A&M advanced to the Sweet 16 in that bracket where they met up with the Oklahoma Sooners. They were beaten by Lon Kruger, Lou Hill, and OU. And Oklahoma went on to the Final Four. He's had success in multiple stops. He's been around great coaches, a good coach himself. I have no doubt that he'll get things going down there. That was Lou Hill's final year as an assistant at OU, and then he immediately after the year took the job as the head man at UT Rio Grande Valley. Dan Camasa will go to the free throw line. Not charting uh, the minutes played as much, but it looks like he, uh, Kennedy has elected to go longer with his starting five before substitution. And this will be the first sub of the second half for the Aggies as Morello comes in for Tyler Davis. Kamasa momentarily ends the Aggie spurt. And he got them both. UT Rio Grande Valley now, 9 of 10 from the free throw line. The Aggies started hot from the stripe, and they've gone cold. Five minutes into the second half and a 14-point lead for the ninth-ranked team in the country. Baseline jumper, Tony Troche Morelos got him an open look after some good passing, but will decide who it went out on. It'll be Rio Grande Valley basketball. Again, that's the short corner they're trying to work down there. It, it, it make, uh, Rio Grande Valley's making it so tough on you because they're just all camped, all five people within 10 feet. So uh, interior pass is going to be a, uh, uh, something that's going to be tough to do. It can be done because you have the height, but uh, doing a good job of closing down and limiting passing lines.
Inbound will come from Javon Levi. You can see he's about five feet off that baseline just to try to get it in over Robert Williams. Very good uh, perimeter ball movement right now. Hoffman. Going to get another shot at it from the elbow. Hoffman was terrific on Tuesday against SMU. It hasn't necessarily carried over. Varner's going to try a three, and he rattled it home. Too many second shots given up on the offensive end as the Aggies don't do a good job of corralling the, the boards. Rio Grand Valley back within 11. Keeping it, uh, pretty much sticking to the same plan of keeping the zone tight. Pretty much stayed in their zone the entire game. That missed everything, but DJ Hogue was on the other side of the basket, and he missed the layup. Kick out pass to Hoffman, hit five threes on Tuesday. He's going to get three free throws now after the foul by Robert Williams. Frustration there and the fact that uh, he didn't get there as quick as he would have thought he could have. We'll make sure he could get it. Uh, got the shot off and did a great job of selling the, the bump. Well, Mike Hoffman out of Burleson, Texas. How about his stat line on Tuesday? 18 points against SMU. He made five threes, also added seven rebounds and three block shots. Productive night, buddy. <laughs> well, please, your head coach. If you could have had one or two other guys do something, it would have been a ball game. Right? <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, coach, what can I say? Wait, we'll stand one, DJ Hogue. It was an 8 0 Aggie run, but if. Hoffman can convert this one, which he can. It would have been an 8-0 Rio Grande Valley. Instead, 7-0, and they are within nine. Finally get J.J. Caldwell with uh, you know, a couple of games under his belt. Uh, expecting big things from him. He's in with basically the majority of the starting lineup. See what he can do. And the 13 minutes left of the game with this Aggie possession. Savion flags back in. That did not fall for him. Robert Williams with the rebound. Potential second chance points for the Aggies and the dunk emphatically by Tony Trojanarellos. How many ways has Admon Gilder helped the Aggies? But here come the Vaqueros right back at Texas A&M. Dan Kamasa to the basket. Coach Kennedy not pleased with that. That's just sheer hustle getting back. I'll take a time out here to talk about that. Well, Billy Kennedy wants to discuss things with his 6-0 and Aggies. They got off to a great start tonight, but UT Rio Grande Valley has hung right in there. The Vaqueros trail by nine. Dish from Admon Gilder. Finish by Tony Trocha Morelos a moment ago. Tighter than expected, UT Rio Grande Valley within nine. Robert Williams, he's got a couple of blocks tonight. The sophomore out of Oil City, Louisiana, 36 games in a row. He has swatted a shot. That is all the games he has played in in his collegiate career. That is the longest current streak in the NCAA. It's hard to, it's hard to top that if you've done it in every game you play, right? I mean, the guy's got a special talent, long arms. Uh, Dag got the quick getting off the floor. Levi with a pass to Hoffman. Hoffman not scared to shoot after he had a good Tuesday, but he has not found the net tonight. Hoffman just one of six from the floor. They are collapsing down low. Anytime the ball gets there to Tyler Davis or Robert Williams, and that's a nice move and a floater. Tyler Davis has 10 points. He and Admon Gilder double figures for AM. Gilder with 12. Kamasa 
He's pretty good from that baseline. He's gonna hit a couple from there tonight. Something about a left-handed shooter. It looks just a little bit better than right hand. I, and I'm right-handed, but I mean, it's a beautiful shot. Tony Trocha Morelos will go to the free throw line, and he will do that when we come back. He's gone under 12 to play. Texas A&M by nine. Vaqueros hanging around. It's a good one in College Station. A&M, ninth ranked team in the country, leads by nine. This is a well-traveled Aggie team. You take a look at where they've gone already this season. Started the year in Germany on Rammstein Air Base in the Armed Forces Classic where they beat West Virginia. So the flights to and from Houston to Frankfurt, that totaled over 10,000 miles. They go to Newark because they played in Brooklyn in the Legends Classic, two games beating Oklahoma State and Penn State. When you get back, you then, right around Thanksgiving, have to go out to the West Coast, Los Angeles, where they beat 10th ranked USC. Home tonight, but John, A&M's next game, they're going back out West in Phoenix to take on the Arizona Wildcats. And by design or not, it's really gonna help them in the tournament situation, and hopefully that's what uh, they're all, everybody in the, in the country is trying to shoot for, but if you could travel like that and play in different environments, different situations, different crowd settings, you're prepping yourself for uh, opportunities that you might have at the end of the season. You know, when you take those trips, it's got to be about more than basketball. Coaches and players tell you that all the time. At Ramstein Air Base, the Aggies got to ride in a C-130. Yeah, it's, it's uh, you know, you get it, it's, a, it's a learning uh, experience. Uh, that's what I think that sport and coaches have come a long ways as far as, like, designing that for that particular educational opportunity, the diversity they're exposed to, and the opportunities for educational experiences. Back in the day, it was more like go to the game, play the game, go home. So I think that's something that's really been an advantageous to modern-day basketball. When the Aggies were in Brooklyn for the Legends Classic, the night they got there, they headed across the river into Manhattan, ate dinner at Carmine's on Times Square, some fine dining. Not so fine on the offense there, thrown out of bounds into the third row. What happens in that packed-in zone, they kind of bait you. There's a pass that looks like you might make on the perimeter, but they've got they're setting you up and if any way you float that or they anticipate a little bit, it's off the races. Kamasa, he loves that shot. He is finding the stroke from that baseline on the right side. I don't know about you, but he's made a believer out of me that he can do that all day long. Kamasa's got 12. He's the first Vaquero to double digits. He hadn't missed, John. Five of five on the floor. Here's J.J. Chandler firing up a three-pointer. He missed. Now Kamasa's on the board. 12 points and seven rebounds for Dan Kamasa. The Rwanda native. That's a bump by J.J. Chandler. He got to the body of Greg Bowie. He'll be called for the foul. Frustration foul there. But again, they spread the floor. Uh, they draw the help. They got an easy shot uh, from where the help came from. Uh, that's a that's a, a, a blow by that shouldn't occur and a little bit of a frustration foul. In just a moment, we will reach the midway point of the second half, and Rio Grande Valley is within eight and can get closer right here. Hoffman. That will not fall. Take that shot all day long. There's a miscommunication on who cover, who has to cover the free throw line area. J.J. Caldwell. The J.J. Chan. Now Tony Trocha Morelos free throw line jumper. That won't fall. Rio Grande Valley, they have come up from their Edinburgh campus. They're going nowhere at Reed Arena tonight. Right in there. With the ninth ranked Texas A&M Aggies, Kamasa, he has been terrific, but missed that one from the paint. And Tyler Davis grabbed the board. Great help and recovery. J.J. Caldwell to Davis, double team. They've been collapsing all night. That got tipped out of bounds as he wanted to go into the corner to J.J. Chandler. 
When you look on the stat sheet, you try to see where A&M and this 10th uh, ranked team has a weakness. If you look at the three point field goal percentage, way up there. You look at the overall field goal percentage from the floor, good. Uh, so when you say pick your poison, they've done a good job and have dialed it up defensively as far as closing out and kind of per preventing getting hurt from the perimeter. Shot clock running low, whistle. And that's on Dan Kamasa. Another patience. You got to go. Keep attacking. Fouls are going to pile up. You got guys in the paint that can uh, you know, draw help. They can finish tough. But guess what goes with that? Make free throws when you get fouled. And uh, a and not cashing in on that tonight. Tyler Davis 0-4 from the line. a and is a team just 50% from the strike. And a lot of Tyler Davis's misses have been well off. Yeah, it's straight on, a lot of rotation. It's just the front of the rim. Every time, grazing the front of the rim every time. 72% from the line coming into the night, but he has not connected once. It's almost like there's a little hesitation at the top of his release as opposed to just flowing through it. It's time for a deep breath, a little relaxation. And he does find the cords. Rio Grande Valley, the advantage from the free throw line tonight, 11 out of 13. Hoffman to Dixon. Stallworth under 10 on the shot clock. Big shot by Dixon. That's who you want to find when you need it. Averages 22 points per game. Second team all Western Athletic Conference last year. Preseason all whack before this campaign. Dixon's now got nine. They need him to come alive if they're going to try to complete this comeback. Within six, you got to go back to when it was six to nothing the last time. Rio Grande Valley only trailed by this deficit. Rio Grande Valley is going to learn from this game. Uh, they're in it right now. It's, it's it's anybody's game the way they're playing at this point. But what great resilience from the start that they uh, put themselves in. Hogue gets a pick from Tony Trocha Morelos. He's going all the way to the basket, and he'll try to complete a three-point play. That's a big, big time right there. Uh, it's something that I think that he's worked on in the offseason. Uh, kind of hampered last year, but being able to put it on the floor with his length, his size, his soft touch, uh, he's done a lot better at attacking it more than just the perimeter jump shooter that, that he has been noted for. He can put it on the glass, up on the floor, and get to the glass. He completes it. Hoffman got the foul. He's got three. There are five Vaqueros with three fouls. A&M has Tyler Davis with three. That's your trouble at this point. Under eight to play and a nine-point A&M lead again. Spread the floor. Great job using the clock. That was one of your keys tonight. And as Stallworth tried to drive, J.J. Chandler picked up a foul. Valiant effort by the Vaqueros. They are within nine of the ninth ranked team in the country. Dr. John Thornton, Tyler Davis has been a mixed bag for him this evening. He does have 11 points, five of six from the floor, but he is one of six from the free throw line. And he has picked up three fouls. He has. Uh, he's been the center of attention in this collapsing zone. So anything he's scored, he's had to really work for. He's capable. He's got a very quick step, great hands. Uh, he's going to see that more more all year long because he is no secret. He's a, a, a force around the basket. UT Rio Grande Valley got within six, closest they had been in a long time. Hoffman, floater, finally gets one to fall. Seven point AM advantage. Came back out after that timeout in the zone. Now UT uh, Rio Grande's coming out with the half court trap back to his own, probably. Davis was open beneath the bucket, but he finds Tony Trocha Morelos in the clear. 
We've under seven minutes left in the game with this Vaquero possession. They've been attacking uh, uh, the Vaqueros, the, the free throw line. Uh, pass that was errant. J.J. Chandler wants to go the rest of the way. He got fouled by Lou Stallworth. Nice look by Tyler Davis after getting the pass on the block. Yeah, post men taking care of post men are, are guys with length, and you see nice hands when he catches it and scores, but he's also got nice hands as far as getting rid of it and getting the people in the interior passing department. J.J. Chandler is going to try to put the Aggies back up by double digits. And the Katy, Texas native does so. A&M just 54% from the free throw line. And Robert Williams checking back in. He'll probably play the pack part of the zone. It's one thing that happens. He's a special player. What normally would be a high percentage shot as you get within five or six feet of the basket might not be so if he's in the back playing goalkeeper. After Chandler makes the free throws, he heads to the bench. Admon Gilder comes in. Gilder has 12. That leads the Aggies. Dan Kamasa on top of the scoring ledger for the Vaqueros with 12 of his own. Jordan Jackson is in the game for Rio Grande Valley. Three-point shot. That was from Stallworth. He couldn't connect. Important possession for the Aggies. Back to the zone. No more three-quarter quarter, quarter half-court trap. Straight up zone, still collapsing. DJ Hogue got an open look, and he sized it up, found the net. Difference with closing out on DJ, 6-9, launches it from high. You have to really anticipate that ball's getting there to get there in time to try to influence a shot. Tough duty. Last five scored by the Aggies. An important sequence there as it's a double-digit lead again all the way out to 14. The zone has, pro has created problems for him. Not chasing around the spread out man-to-man -man offense. Locating shooters, limiting them to one shot. Been the difference here late. Dixon, you feel like he needs to get involved for UT Rio Grande Valley. He's got nine, but that's well under his season average. Fired up that three-pointer a moment ago that hit front iron. Tyler Davis going to the line, trying to complete a three-point play. Great lineup working in there right now, and imagine that it's the starting lineup. Started it off that way, finished the game that way. Uh, great looks, sharing the basketball. UT Rio Grande getting a little bit tired, having a hard time getting to the, the paint now, but doing a really good job of collapsing. Uh, didn't get there that time. Tyler Davis still struggling from the free throw line. It is a 7-0 A&M run and an important one. Timeout taken by Lou Hill and the Rio Grande Valley Vaqueros. Timeouts are undervalued, I think, by the average person. And what happens in that momentum changes, uh, philosophies change defensively. You have a chance to kind of get everybody on the same page. And it's a, both coaches have done a good job when things have gone south in certain parts of this game to, to really maximize the use of their timeouts either change defenses or refocus each team on what they're trying to be doing at this point of the game. Actually, you can extend the A&M run. It's 9-0, the Aggie advantage. It was 57-50. A&M after this one, they're going to head out west. Got a match up with the Arizona Wildcats. Zona has struggled. Started the year number two in the country, but they've hit some tough times. That game will be played in Phoenix at the home of the Suns, and then John back here at Reed Arena for four straight as they head toward the Christmas holiday. It seems like we've been, or A&M has been playing basketball for a long time. We've been watching basketball, but uh, there's a lot of basketball ahead, and then you get into conference play. So, I mean, it's a fun time of the year if you're a basketball fan, seeing teams shape up, seeing teams come together. 
And uh, then the, the matchups, the various matchups that uh, the Aggies have had, also the opportunities that the Vaqueros had, playing people like Georgia Tech, SMU. See if you can learn from it, get better, and use the Christmas break and games in that time to get you ready for conference. Yeah, then when you get close to New Year's, that's when SEC play begins. Hoffman, he's got a basket. The Aggies open conference play December 30th in Tuscaloosa against Avery Johnson and the Alabama Crimson Tide. Their first home SEC contest right after New Year's, January 2nd. They host the Florida Gators, and that is shaping up to be a blockbuster one within the SEC. SEC's had a pretty impressive run in the uh, preseason in the fact that there's a number of teams that were anticipated to be good, but they're showing that that was deserved because they're, they're playing tough schedules, playing people hard-nosed, uh, got a lot of national recognition right now. Very competitive. Uh, it's going to shape up as an extremely competitive uh, conference. And it was such a strong NCAA tournament for the league last year. Dwayne Wilson at three. That's no good. But Robert Williams back up, and he'll go to the line. He had three SEC teams in the late eight, and then Frank Martin in the South Carolina Gamecocks. They break through to the final four. And when you look at what's happened early this year, the only team that's below 500 is Vanderbilt, but the Commodores have played an extremely tough schedule. I think some of the big news, uh, unfortunately, would be the injury to Michael Porter Jr. at Missouri. How will the Tiger, Tigers handle his absence? But this league ended last season with strength, and it appears they're only stronger in 2017 and 18. I don't think it's a question about that. I think uh, the upgrades that uh, in the commitment to basketball is evident. Uh, you see some great coaches making great strides in programs that they've been at for a you know, couple of years or building the program um, or solidifying the program. But, uh, yeah, on a given night, it's not going to surprise you uh, upsets occurring or dominating performance occurring because it's a talented from top to bottom lead. Be no gimmies on the schedule this season. And that's quite a start for A&M. At Alabama, host Florida, first two SEC games. Provide some nice tests to begin the league slate. Bowie started the game hot, trying to heat up again. Dixon, 11 points for him now. He's gotten the double digits. Not blocking out well out of the zone. The Aggies will in that situation. You got to put a body on, even though you're responsible for an area, a body in that area. You got to put a, put a, uh, a body on. Him. And uh, Dan Kamasa, he's fouled out now for UT Rio Grande Valley. Three pointer at Mod Gilder. AM up 17. And remember, the Vaqueros were well within single digits probably about four or five minutes ago, according to the game clock. AM started the game up 16 0. Solid effort by UT Rio Grand Valley since then. Gotten it down to single digits on several occasions, but now the Aggies up 17. And looking to make this one or formality. That all but went down for DJ Ho. Under three minutes to go now. Well, the stroke before looked pretty good. It just wouldn't fall. No reason for DJ Hogue not to try it again. No, it's the body of work on DJ this year indicates that he's feeling really, really good about it. He's always been known as a shooter. But he's got great confidence in that shot. Missed it. Get it right back. I look extremely smooth and confident with the shot. A new largest lead for Texas A&M. They're now up 20. Aggies by 20 now. They've stretched the lead again. They're being paced by DJ Hogue and Admon Gilder. DJ Hogue, four of seven from long range. Admon Gilder, three of five. They're sizing them up. Oh, you got to like it. And what I think is impressive is look at the rebound numbers for Hogue. Ten. Done a great job there. 
assists. We'll go look at it. But at the same time, I think Admon and both of them are creating opportunities for their uh, their teammates also. So DJ Hogue, a double-double. Looking at the rebounding column, Robert Williams has 12. Xavier McDaniel Jr., the basket, and a steal by Hoffman. No, he couldn't hang on to it. Tried the alley-oop, collision. Everybody's up and okay. And Dixon going to the basket, could not finish. Gilder can go one-on-one -on -one with Hoffman. Floater wouldn't fall. He got his own rebound, he wants a putback. <laughs> Admon, he's tough like that, though. Give me a chance, give me a head fake. I'm the strong guy, I'll try to finish. Front iron no good, and a 13th rebound for Robert Williams. Check that, he was in on one a moment ago. He's got 14 boards. Sophomore out of Oil City. And wholesale substitutions, the next uh, dead ball. Yep. Five new Aggies will come in. If I'm Coach Lou Hill, I'm excited about the resilience of the team. Not really fired up about the score, but at the same time, we went on in a, uh, uh, in a situation, a top 10 team on their court and uh, battled back from a deficit, made it a ball game, ran out of numbers, and uh, getting a little bit uh, a little lax defensively. You can understand that just because of the team. One of the Aggies stepping in is Chris Collins, the junior from Friendswood, Texas. He sees his first action tonight. Gilder has now 17 points. JJ Chandler comes in for Gilder after he makes those free throws. Turning point in this game was when Amy came out of timeout and went to a 2-3 zone, a matchup zone, and had Robert Williams play center field. He got about every rebound and kind of cooled off the perimeter shooting for the Rotaros. Marlon Williams is in the game for UT Rio Grande Valley. Savion Flag tried to go high for the rebound, but Dixon got it. Dixon's got 13. That's good by Nick Dixon. One minute remaining. One minute. Under a minute left now. The Aggies will go to 7 and 0 this year. And it appears they will still have all their wins by double digits. It's tipped out of bounds. The Aggies are going to have five on the shot clock. So A&M is off to Phoenix to take on Arizona in their next contest. Marquee matchup, although Zona is struggling since garnering that number two ranking. J.J. Chandler with a nice drive. Hoffman finds his range. Hoffman has gotten to double digits. He's got 11. The shooter, let him get his feet right. He can nail it every time. At least he has tonight. Well, both coaches start to make their way towards each other. Billy Kennedy and Lou Hill will shake hands. Lou Hill, somewhat of a homecoming. He was an assistant coach here at Texas A&M from 1998 to 2004. And John, his Vaqueros put up a really nice effort. They were in it for much of the game, but the ninth-ranked team of the country, they do pull away to win by 18. They did the starters, came back in eight minutes to go, uh, put the distance out there, but Lou Hill won under the fight. They fought tonight, and they did a good job of overcoming a very poor sh uh, start, shooting at the very beginning of the game, and gave the Ag Aggies a game through uh, about three-quarters of the way until I think a little bit of the fatigue factor caught up with them. All right, our thanks for joining us tonight. For John Thornton and our entire crew at 12 Man Productions, I'm Will Johnson saying good evening from College Station, Texas. The Aggies score the first 16 points of the game, then UT Rio Grande Valley hung around. A&M pulls away late to win this one.
by 18. To watch a replay of this game, log on to watchespn.com or download the Watch ESPN app. This has been a presentation of the SEC ESPN Network.